Today we're diving into the latest tech EV and Tesla news and there's a lot to unpack. From a major shift in how Tesla plans to price full self-driving to officially launched Model Y updates in the United States, plus fresh developments. From Rivian, Lucid, Apple, and more, this is one of those weeks where nearly every headline feels significant. There's also a deeper look at Tesla's expanding robo-taxi ambitions and what those mysterious cybercab prototypes really tell us about the company's future direction. Let's get into it. We'll start with Tesla's ongoing expansion into autonomous driving and robo-taxis, which is quickly becoming one of the most important parts of the company's long-term strategy. Recently, a Tesla validation vehicle was spotted in Flagstaff, Arizona which has sparked speculation that the city could be one of the next testing grounds for Tesla's robo-taxi network. The vehicle appeared to be a Model Y, suggesting Tesla may initially deploy existing production vehicles rather than waiting for a fully purpose-built. Robo-taxi to be approved everywhere. This kind of validation testing is a key step before any wider rollout, and Tesla tends to quietly gather data in multiple locations before making anything official. Meanwhile, in Austin, Texas, observers noticed an unusual convoy of six Model Y vehicles driving together. Seeing that many identical vehicles in a row immediately raised eyebrows, and most people believe this was another form of validation testing. Running multiple vehicles in a convoy allows Tesla to simulate fleet behavior, test communication between cars, and gather consistent data under the same road conditions. Austin has already become ground zero for Tesla's autonomy efforts, so it's not surprising to see this kind of activity ramping up there. At the same time, sightings of Tesla's future cybercab continue to increase. These prototypes have now been seen testing in at least four different cities, including Chicago, the San Francisco Bay Area, Buffalo and New York, and Austin. Texas, each new sighting adds another piece to the puzzle of what Tesla is building. In one recent video from Austin, a cybercab prototype was spotted testing in a parking lot, giving onlookers another clear look at the vehicle's lighting, proportions, and general layout. Based on current estimates, there appear to be roughly 10 cybercab prototypes actively testing on public roads in and around Austin. What makes the cybercab so interesting is that it's clearly not designed with a traditional driver in mind. In photos and videos, you can see a test driver awkwardly positioned far back from the steering wheel, which looks completely out of place in the cabin. That discomfort is actually revealing. It strongly suggests that the interior layout was never meant to accommodate a steering wheel or pedals in the first place. Instead, this vehicle appears to be purpose-built for autonomy. With the steering wheel, only temporarily added to satisfy testing or regulatory requirements, it raises the question of how long it will be before Tesla is confident enough and legally allowed to put one of these vehicles on the road without any manual controls at all. Tesla's broader vision is that these autonomous vehicles won't be rare or experimental for long. The company expects them to become common sites across the United States, operating as part of a large robo-taxi network. In that context, the cybercab isn't just another car. It's a glimpse into what Tesla believes urban transportation could look like in the near future with fleets of autonomous vehicles providing and-demand mobility without human drivers. On the consumer side of autonomy, there's also a massive change coming very soon, specifically related to full self-driving. Elon Musk recently announced that Tesla will stop selling FSD as a one-time purchase after February 14th. After that date, FSD will only be available through a monthly subscription. This is a major shift in strategy, especially considering how Tesla has marketed FSD over the years. For a long time, Tesla positioned full self-driving as a premium upfront purchase that would increase in value over time. At one point, the price climbed as high as $15,000 and buying it outright was the only way to access the feature. Later, Tesla dropped the price to $8,000 and eventually introduced a subscription option at $199 per month. That subscription was later reduced to $99 per month, making it far more accessible. Now, with the purchase option being eliminated entirely, Tesla is signaling that FSD is no longer a product you own, but rather a service you subscribe to. Initially, 
it looks like the subscription price will remain at $1.99 per month, at least when the purchase option disappears. There's also speculation that Tesla could introduce an annual subscription at a slight discount, possibly around $999. Per year, that would mirror pricing strategies seen in other software and service businesses, and it would give Tesla more predictable recurring revenue. However, this change also introduces uncertainty. When you buy something outright, you're locked into that price. With a subscription, Tesla can adjust pricing over time. Many people believe that once FSD reaches a higher level of capability, especially if it approaches true unsupervised driving, Tesla will raise the subscription price. And from that perspective, $99 per month to be driven anywhere autonomously would actually be extremely cheap compared to the value it provides. This announcement has sparked a lot of debate, especially among longtime Tesla owners who paid for FSD years ago, often at much higher prices. And many international customers still haven't received the full feature set that was originally promised. That raises important questions about what happens to these early adopters now. Do they get any special status? Are they grandfathered into some future benefit? Does FSD remain transferable for them? And should there be some kind of reward or recognition for those who paid up front and waited through years of development? There's also the practical question of whether buying FSD right now, before the February 14th cutoff, makes sense. The answer really depends on individual circumstances. How long do you plan to keep your Tesla? Do you drive enough to justify? A subscription month after month? And how much do you value having FSD permanently attached to the vehicle, especially if transferability rules change in the future? For some people, paying up front might still make sense, while for others, a subscription offers more flexibility. With less risk, from Tesla's perspective, moving to a subscription-only model aligns FSD with how the technology is actually used and improved. Full self-driving is constantly evolving, with new versions, neural network updates, and expanded. Capabilities rolling out over time, treating it as a living service rather than a static product arguably makes more sense. It also lowers the barrier to entry, which could significantly increase adoption rates. In the past, the high upfront price kept many people from trying FSD at all. A $99 monthly fee is much easier to justify, even for curious users who just want to test it for a month or two. At the same time, Tesla has to balance accessibility with profitability. If FSD truly becomes capable of unsupervised driving, the value proposition changes dramatically. At that point, Tesla may find that it can charge much more without reducing demand. However, history suggests that pricing too aggressively too early can backfire. When Tesla pushed the purchase price to $15,000, the take rate dropped sharply, and the company eventually had to reverse course. It's likely Tesla will be cautious this time. It's gradually adjusting pricing as real-world capability and consumer trust improve. Beyond Tesla, the broader EV and tech landscape continues to evolve rapidly. Rivian and Lucid are both navigating challenging market conditions while pushing forward with new products and production strategies. Apple, meanwhile, remains deeply involved in automotive and AI partnerships, signaling that the lines between traditional tech companies and automakers are becoming increasingly blurred. All of this adds context to Tesla's moves. As the company isn't just competing with car manufacturers anymore, but with technology giants and mobility platforms, when you step back and look at the big picture, it's clear that Tesla is laying. The groundwork for a future where software, autonomy, and services are just as important as the vehicles themselves. The robo-taxi sightings, the cybercab prototypes, and the shift to subscription-only full self-driving all point in the same direction. Tesla isn't just selling cars. It's building an ecosystem where transportation is autonomous, on-demand, and deeply integrated with software. Whether this vision arrives sooner or later remains to be seen. Regulatory hurdles, technical challenges, and public perception will all play major roles. But what's undeniable is that Tesla is actively moving toward that future and the changes. We're seeing now, especially around FSD pricing and deployment, are early signals of how that transition will happen. 